All right, good morning, everybody. Rub those sleepies out of your eyes. We are getting a... Rub those sleepies out of your eyes. We are getting away from geometry again, back into the numerical concepts. Welcome to Math Lesson 33. We are talking about rounding numbers and estimating. So to start off with here, when you're rounding, it can help us estimate the answer to a problem. And that word estimate means you're going to get close to the right number, but not exactly. And one way we estimate is by calculating with rounded numbers because they're easier to do in our heads using our mental math. Rounded numbers or round numbers usually end in 0 or 5 for the easiest calculations. So if we had something like this with the number 130, we can think that it's closest to 100. So I'd want to use 100 if I was doing mental math, if I was just worried about close to what the number is. Or over here, 280, we can see is closest to 300. It's a whole lot easier to multiply by 300 in our heads than by 280, right? So we use estimated numbers when we want to get close to the exact answer. So if we wanted to go on around 532 to the nearest hundred, we could draw out a number line and we can label and place the number in there close, and we could see 532 is probably closest to 500. But that's a lot of work to do for every problem. So I want to introduce you to a slightly easier way in my book. You're always welcome to draw out a number line. But always think about what you're rounding to. Like in this case, they said we're rounding 532 to the nearest hundred. I always like to underline where I'm rounding to. I'm going to underline that guy to the nearest hundred. And then it says, if the neighbor to the right is five or greater, round the underlined digit up one. So the neighbor to the right is three. Is that five or greater? No, it is not. So if the neighbor to the right is less than five, which three is, he's the neighbor to the right, and he's less than five, leave it alone and change all the digits to the right into zero. So leave that five alone. Keep them as a five and change everything else to the right to zeros. 500, that was what we found out when we put it on the number line. All right, we're going to practice that quite a bit. So if you didn't understand it, you don't have to hit rewind just yet. So here it's saying round to the nearest tens. So let's start here with 14. Which digit is in the 10 spot? That's the 1. And then we're going to look to the neighbor to the right. If it's 5 or greater, we're going to round the underlined digit up 1. If the neighbor to the right is less than 5, leave it alone. Is the neighbor to the right less than 5? Yes, he is. So keep your 1 and fill in everything to the right. 14 is closest to 10. Let's try another one here. Three is the digit in the 10 spot. Look to the neighbor to the right. Hey, that is more than five. So I can round this three up to a four. And everything to the right of the underlined number is a zero. 39 is closest to 40. Check out this one. It sometimes messes up fifth graders. 9 is the digit in the 10 spot. The neighbor to the right is definitely more than 5, so I'm going to 
round the underlined digit up one. What's one up from nine? Well, that would be 10, right? And everything to the right becomes a zero. Hey, that's a hundred. And our last one here, 193. Sometimes kids get excited and they want to underline that one, but you got to remember, hey, we're underlining to the nearest tens. So I'm just going to go and underline that nine right there and look to his neighbor to the right. And that's less than five, so I'm going to keep that nine. I'm also keeping that one because we read our digits left to right, correct? So let's write in the 19 because the neighbor to the right was less than five. And everything else is a zero. 193 is closest to 190. Are you understanding that? Now would be a good time to hit rewind if you're still in the dark because we're going to kick it up a notch here. Now we're going to try to round to the nearest hundreds. So again, underline the digit in the hundreds. Look at your neighbor to the right. If it's more than five, I'm adding one. If it's less than five, I'm leaving them alone. Six is more than five. So let's change the underlined digit into a six. Everything else to the right becomes a zero. 562 rounds to 600. Three is the digit in the hundreds place. Look to my neighbor to the right. He's less than five. So let's just keep him as three and fill in everything else as zeros. 313 is closest to 300. One of those tricky guys again. I'm underlining the first nine. I'm looking to the right. He's more than five, so I want to kick up this nine one more. The next number up is a ten. Everything else becomes zeros. You got two more digits to write as zeros. 999, that's closest to a thousand. And one more like this. Seven is the digit in my hundred spot, right? I didn't underline that one. I'm going to look to my neighbor to the right. He's less than five, so I want to keep this guy just as he is. I'm going to keep my one. I'm going to keep my seven. These two guys get changed into zeros. 1,749 is closest to 1,700. Again, if you didn't understand what was going on right there, I strongly suggest hit and rewind. Check this guy out. Basically, what we're trying to say here is, if you see the word about in a story problem, and you will over and over and over, that's your clue word to get an estimated answer using rounded numbers. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. It says, in the election, Tom won 27 votes and Gail won 34 votes. About how many votes did they win all together? Did you catch it? We have the word about, which means estimate. So 27, hey, that looks like it's closest to 30, right? And 34, that looks like that's going to round to 30 as well. So I have 27 with an estimate of 30. I have 34 with the estimated rounded number of 30. And they want to know how much they won together is the clue word about what type of math I should be doing. 30 plus 30 to figure out all together, right? Do I even need to put this down on paper? Can you figure out 30 plus 30 in your head? I am sure hoping so. They got about 
60 votes. It would be closer to 61 votes if you did it for real, but we're using estimated rounded numbers. Check out this guy. The average depth of the ocean is 620 feet. Do you all have that picture in your mind? The depth, how deep it is. The average depth of the Black Sea is 121 feet. To the nearest hundred feet, how much deeper is the average depth of the ocean? They want to know how much deeper. Well, let's do some rounding here. 620, I'd say that's about 600 because the neighbor to the right is only a 2, right? And 121 the neighbor to the right there is less than five. So he's going to round to 100. So this guy is 600. This guy rounds to 100. And they want to know how much deeper. How much deeper. That sounds like a subtraction problem to me. So 600 minus 100. I would leave you 500, wouldn't it? It sure would. Let's keep moving on. A theater group is giving four performances. Sometimes they give you numbers. Sometimes they're going to spell out the word. The theater can seat 424 guests. All the tickets have been sold. 424 guests a night for four nights, four performances. They want you to estimate the total number of people who plan to see the play by rounding the number of guests to the nearest hundred. So four is in the hundreds. Look at the neighbor to the right. He's less than five. He's only a two. So 424 rounds to 400. So 400 people are going to show up that first night. Another 400 people are going to show up the second performance. And another 400 for the third performance. And another 400 for the fourth performance. What are we going to do with those numbers? We could go 400 plus 400 plus 400 plus 400. Or we could just multiply it 400 times 4, and you should know that's going to give us about 1,600 people showing up for the four performances of the play. Check this out. Hopefully you did not hit fast forward because this will put a roadblock on you. Sometimes rounding can't help us estimate the answer to a problem especially division problems. One way we can estimate division is by calculating with compatible numbers. Basically, we're saying round the dividend to a number that the divisor will divide into evenly without a remainder. What are you talking about, Mr. Hines? Well, Here's a sample problem. Leah's car traveled 138 miles and used six gallons of gas. And they want you to use compatible numbers to estimate how many miles to the gallon Leah's car got. So here's the divisor, six. But my dividend is 138. And when they want you to use compatible numbers, round the dividend to a number that the divisor will divide into evenly without a remainder. Well, let's take a look at that 13. Let's think of multiples of 6. I don't want to change this into something with a 0 on it because I know 6 can't divide into that evenly. How about if I round this 13 into a 12? Because I know for a fact 6 divides into 12 evenly. 
And then I got one extra digit there, so I better change it to a zero. That's a weird bit of rounding, 138 rounded just to 120. But the beauty of compatible numbers, watch this. Six times what is 12? Hey, that's two. Multiplies back for 12, subtracts for zero, and you're going to bring down your zero. You end up with a nice even number of 20. I assure you, if you divided 138 by 6, it would not divide as nice and neat as this. Let's try one more. And here it says, between them, Mr. and Mrs. Smith worked 121 hours of overtime the past seven days. Use compatible numbers to estimate how many hours of overtime Mr. and Mrs. Smith worked. So it works the same way. Round the dividend to a number that the divisor will divide into evenly without a remainder. Let's see what I got here. The first two digits here represent 12, and I'm dividing by 7. Well, I know 12 can't divide by 7 evenly, but you know what can? 14 can, right? So I want to round 121 into 140. Looks awful weird, doesn't it? But it's going to divide beautifully. 7 times what is 14? Hey, that's a 2. And I like just bringing the 0 up. This is considered more short division. But I know for a fact if I multiplied it back for 14, subtracted for 14, and brought down this 0, and then I went 7 times 0 is 0. You're going to end up with the same answer. But a couple people are really struggling with their steps, so I wouldn't advise jumping into this until you're really comfortable with five-step division. Okay, I believe that is the end. You are definitely going to want some scratch paper and a pencil for your Socrative quiz today. Good luck.